We are Stephen and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show. Entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, fighting back a cough and broadcasting from sunny <laughs> Southern California. <laughs> Today, Jill and I, fighting back a cough. I got to say, isn't it kind of funny that um, I, nowadays with the corona issue, we're going to, I don't know what to call it right now. I've heard so many funny sayings. But anyway, I'm afraid to cough or sneeze or do anything yeah. in public because I'm afraid to breathe. Ex- too loud Breathe in public. In or out. Exactly. <laughs> I'm a lot. Of, you can look at people with through a protective lens, <laughs> but heaven forbid you touch, breathe, sneeze, uh, blow air, fart. <laughs> just wow. I don't know. Just kidding. <laughs> Never heard you say that in ten years. I've known you. Because girls don't do that. I know. <laughs> Anyway, that's why I was holding back a cough. I'm like panicking. We were we were somewhere the other day in a store with our child, and he sneezed, and I thought everybody was just it was like Costco, and the, and twenty heads turned. I couldn't get out the wipes fast enough. You know, it's like uh, used to be like smoking. <laughs> oh, you know, it seems like overnight you could smoke, you could light up a cigarette in a grocery store. Yeah, wouldn't matter. And then overnight, it just seemed like wow, you're the devil. Yeah, you're smoking. Yeah, we There's, all like, isn't that true? My head pops up now if I'm if I'm on the pier and I I smell smoke I'm like all right who's doing it yep. who is it You're going and now to hell. it's that's right and now it's a now sneeze a or a cough <laughs> I can think of a few things that people do a lot uh, okay. that should be classified as the smoking coughing thing I love it what is it we will lose ninety percent of our oh, listeners all right. We will lose all seven listeners that we have. Can you say it in show. code for no. the? Okay, all right. Well, no, and everybody knows what I'm talking about. There are things that people do that are just ridiculous, but they seem to be okay right now. And it's all the decade we're in. There, it's stuff that's just okay and acceptable. So I don't, I don't know. know, but so if you know, please share it with me <laughs> later. <laughs> uh, you think you know people? All, every single one of them is covered multiple times in, in the Seinfeld uh, sitcom. Oh, it's, that's you know, it. People, it's, if you've ever been disgusted okay. by somebody that you went on a date with, and it's totally okay for some reason, but you just you're like, no, it's not okay for you to clip your toenails like that in a in a <laughs> state park. Okay. Or you know, you shouldn't. This is the beach, and I know that you think you look good, but no, yeah. you don't. Oh, I do know that one. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah, that one's true. I I'm familiar with that. I didn't grow up. I you know it's funny. I missed the Seinfeld wave. Isn't that weird? No, you didn't. It's totally okay. All right. I've seen it, obviously, and seen many of them, but not all of them. You know, the thing is about Seinfeld, it's just constant references to things. And so that's the value in it. But sitting there watching the show, and I've only seen probably 10 or 15 episodes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're the same episode over and over again. They just deal with different stuff, dating and and, uh, the silly habits that we have. Right. And uh, things like that. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> you didn't miss anything, trust me. <laughs> Today, Jill and I talk about what does a salesperson of the future look like? You know, because Jill's, Jill's a salesperson, and to some degree, I am too. I don't like to admit it or talk about it. But I think it's going to change. I, I think sales has so dramatically changed in the last 10 years even. With the, I have with some computers. notes. Last 10 years and last 10 days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great, Joe. Uh-huh. I love the up-to-date thing. Uh-huh. I, I, it just hit me. I was thinking about it today, putting down notes of what I wanted to talk about on the show. And I'm like, I know what the salesperson of the future is, and I'll tell you here in a few minutes. Excellent. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Scott wrote, Hello. I've been a Land Academy member since 2019, and I have received a purchase agreement from my last mailer, which led to a discussion with the owner. Much to my surprise, not really, since I know this happens quite often, in parentheses, the owner mentioned that he also had 240 additional parcels in the same county. Cha-ching. Right? I love these. Most are five acres, with the largest being 10 acres. It's great. Just asking for advice on how to potentially proceed with this large number of parcels. The owner has been selling parcels every year and has dealt with long-term option contracts, like one year with another land investor in the past. 
That's a long time. I wonder if it was me. Yeah. <laughs> I this is believe a made for Jack deal. That I could easily wholesale these parcels and make a minimum of four hundred dollars per parcel, but will not be willing to bite off more than I can handle. Any thoughts are much appreciated. Appreciated. Sincerely, Scott. Like anything. What you want to do first is get all the data, get all the APNs, and run an analysis and see what you're looking at. And so I would, this is a sentence I would say with, with as much enthusiasm as you possibly can muster. <laughs> this is about sales. So, you know, sales happen on the acquisition side too. I would say we love these kinds of deals. I personally have a massive uh, constituency. I know who to sell these properties to. This is what we do for a living. We've done it for years. I'm part of this huge group. We do hundreds and hundreds of deals every single day. I would love, love, love to see the list of these properties. And I'm extremely confident I can put something together, actually probably pretty quickly. Please send me the list of APNs. I'm going to run an analysis. I'll probably need about a day to do it. And I'll give you a call back with an offer. We do want to buy these properties. It's just now a matter of the quality of the properties and the price. So, you know, it's funny when you first start talking, I thought you were going to go with an option agreement, which I'm not really a fan of right now. I'm not either. Okay. I mean, right. we never have. I don't really discuss it. Was fun. Where do the, this is the Jack and Jill show, how we do it differently. <laughs> I don't share what I do. If they ask what I do, what are you going to do with them? I'm like, this is my business. I'm going to roll them into my inventory and see how it goes. Wow. But I don't really talk about my business very much. I just, and, and honestly, most of the sellers that I talk to don't really care. They just want to get rid of it and how fast they can get a check. That's so this, really what it's about. Well, okay, this is a great point to bring this up. This might just become the whole show here. A person that has all this property in their inventory is a deal maker just like us. And so you want to appeal to that person's sense of, uh, you have it times 10, Joe. I want to get a deal done. What do you mean you have this kind of thing? You buy and sell property. You have all this big, you're involved in this big group. I want you to win too. I want you to win. So let's try to put a, a deal together. I love your enthusiasm. I agree with you. The one-off sellers like, just get this out of my garage. I'm, I'm going with the coronavirus yeah. 10 day plan. I, that's so that's the whole thing. I guess the, the, the question oh, is I don't this option contract doesn't it probably doesn't apply here. Yeah, yeah. It, with I the, hope with he's this group, saying that we'll, we'll raise the cash. Well, I hope that he's saying he's been doing it and it sucked. Because <laughs> if I had a one year option agreement with somebody, it's you know what's funny? I just did a I just signed it with a broker the other day and I said, look, I'm signing this. Well, he's like, he was open to rewriting it too. He would even do 30 days at a time. It's just a pain in the ass to keep extending it. But, and I didn't mean it like that. I, when I get going with a broker, I'm interested in a six month uh, relationship because I want it to be over in 30 days. So he's not talking about doing an option on these properties. Okay. He's talking about doing a release. Okay. Well, I twenty percent of the properties on the first. Well, do I don't even know if we even know that. Maybe she just take them all down. I guess my question is on this thing. I don't. I don't read it like that, and I don't know what the seller wants. So yeah. does the seller want cash right now because he's gonna? Everybody does because he's moving to Alaska and saying, you know, I'm gonna be virus free with my family over here, or you know, such and such. So that's, Who doesn't want cash right now? Like I sound like the poopy one today. Yeah, you do. <laughs> This kind of deal excites me, man. I've done a, bu a bunch of these. Oh. And every single deal that I've done where it's like, it checks all the boxes for me. Usually one box is unchecked. One thing, usually the deals we do are like, I love every single thing about this property except check one of the boxes. It might be price, might be uh, access. There's usually one, but it's timing, but we still do it. How fast you want to do this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it might be seller's attitude. Yeah. So this, if it checks all the boxes, I'll, I will gleefully write a check and add it to the other side of my balance sheet. That's what this is. We're just shifting cash and assets around a balance sheet and ending up with equity. Okay, so you're going to be Jill today and I'm going to be Steven. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is, this, these kinds of deals really make me happy. This is going to be funny. Let's, take, let's see if we can keep, continue this. <laughs> There's always five. <laughs> Look, he's talking about 240 properties, two yeah. or three or four, four or five of those are going to be like, yeah. Probably right. pay for the whole deal. Okay, I'm going to go back to Jill for a minute here. The big picture is ding, ding. Those are nice size properties. I don't know what county they are, but if it's a good county that's not flooded with available property, then you could be happy and be busy here for a year or two. And make a million bucks. These. Yeah, so exactly. That, that's, the, that's the point here. Exactly. And if you need the funds, we all know it's out there. Boy, is it out there. People are calling me. My checkbook's open for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Today's topic... 
what does a salesperson of the future look like? Well, apparently, what do, what do they look like 10 years ago and 10 days ago? This is the meat of the show. You like my saying? I did. I just repeated it, sort of. Okay, good. <laughs> so we were talking yesterday when we came up with this topic, and I'm just like, what's going to happen? I was thinking like, okay, look at all this crazy stuff that's going on right now. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to salespeople? They're not going to be needed. It's so interesting. And what's funny is about like us personally, I've had that job. I've cold called to my, to, you know, you, you, anyone who's been in this business knows you do 80, hundred calls a day, outbound calls. That's a lot of work. It's not so much fun. And I'm thinking right now, I'm like, okay, things are changing. And first of all, what am I selling? You know, so many things, so many industries and so many things are going to change. We're all going to be um, rewriting our job descriptions and our maybe our companies and where we're going with this. So are people needed? So here's my here's my big point to this whole thing. I want to talk about it with you. So as I'm putting down notes and thinking about what's happening and what's coming and you know what are we going to sell? Your best salesperson right now is nothing but an online marketer. Think about that really? for a minute. Because I'm not really sure a huge sales team is needed. So, if, for example, we're doing it right now anyway. We are, we've always been that way. We buy property, make it look really good on the internet, put it out there, have a button to check out and pay. I don't need a salesperson. I don't need a team. I need a person to write a beautiful description and take great pictures and put it all together. So that's that's where I think this is going. Everything that I'm doing online, like I'm not talking to people. Not, you know, isn't that funny? I'm not getting any calls. I don't know about anybody else too, but no one's calling me to buy anything, but they sure are hitting me with emails all day long. I'm getting nothing but ads and emails and things. It's all online marketing. Nobody wants to talk. So let me, can I throw, ask you yeah. a bunch of questions? I think there's a, we're covering, we're just saying sales here, but there's lots of different types of sales. Here's a, here's a failing type of sales, regardless of how great you are. You have a flashlight that you can buy for 30 cents that you want to sell for $1.50 on Amazon. And so the only way you're going to get any attention or, or sell that flashlight at all to any degree of success is through making sure you're at the top of the search function on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So that's not sales. That's that, marketing. That, that's uh, I would even call that like online tech well, uh, savvy. Well, here's where I'm going with this. There's lots of different the sales we do all happen in the acquisitions because you have the greatest property that's going to rise and it's the cheapest. Right. And it's going to rise to the top in that search that search that they do online. Right. So what you'll say, I'm backing up what you're saying. It well, becomes online marketing. Yeah. And here's my thing too. Like, I, I just think about everybody in our industry. You know, and I, I come back to realtors too. What's going to be needed of them in the future? Because I don't really need them to do a walkthrough with me anymore. I can do a virtual walkthrough. You know, the seller can walk me through on a on a live video chat. Realtors are only surviving on on this uh, fictitious. Uh, it's a, it's an urban legend or urban myth that they have you that they're needed to complete a deal right and, and they they're and they're money. required to hold you through the hold yeah. your hand through the paperwork which most of them don't know the paperwork themselves i mean at some point you know i was thinking about this a couple of days ago you know how you go into realtor.com and you see, and you get all the information that you want about let's say where you live see how prices are line your house up against the houses that are next door all that stuff and then there's a picture of somebody who uses too much hairspray right there it's you know sally smith it's a picture that she's using from 22 years ago, by the way. She doesn't look like anything like that mm -hmm. in person. What if that was an escrow agent? Oh, I think it'd be great. Yeah, me too. It should be. And it, and it was <sighs> like, I, you just click on it and you say, yeah, I do want to buy this house. And uh, here's the escrow agent. That's she's a good idea. Close Combine the two you. jobs into one. She's going to close a deal for you. And here's a list of the top three lenders that, um, that love this neighborhood. And here's the appraisers that they use. Didn't they use? And then you'd save 6% of the deal. Didn't that used to be the way, by the way? I thought that there used to be a, a very strong relationship between uh, agents and real estate agents and title agents. 
And mortgage brokers, yes. Right. So used to be like, like they would a tr- all know a trinity, each other. A trinity right. of things, yeah. You would do for me, I would hand it to my person, yeah. they do my deals, and, and we'd all work together. Well, they rec- they rec- And they would help themselves. each other. Like they would like someone to hear about a deal, like you know, say, Oh, call Susie. She's the real estate agent. She'll show you it to you. And then when you're ready to close, I'll take care of that. I did a deal, a primary residence deal a long time ago, speaking of 10 years ago. And the real estate agent that did the deal, uh, to this day, probably one of the best real estate agents I've ever dealt with. You know who I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. She said- A-B? Yep. Mm-hmm. She said, uh, don't worry about the home mortgage at all. I've got a person that's magical about this and uh, right. I'll, get you the, I'll get a term sheet to you in an hour. And uh, there's only very vari- the only variable is really going to be interest rate because this is what happens and in that interest rate is going to be dictated by your credit score and a couple other things. And she did. That's and exactly we, and I, I said, how can I beat this? This is service. Now I'm like, okay, there's some value here. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, I don't, we got off on a real estate agent tangent, I really, know. because that's like an example of sales that's just in our industry and antiquated and over. It was over ten years ago. Right. So yeah, I'm kind of wanting, but I'm seriously think about. Well, just think about all the retail, you know, it's, we're not retail, but I'm just thinking about salespeople. That's where I think that they, they are. The, I'm not seeing them The harder coming you have back. to sell something, the worse the product can stand on its own two feet. Oh, I got something to say about that. This is kind of your show. I, I keep, I'm, I'm just, I'm filling here. Oh, good. Thank you. Now you're filler. bringing up good ideas. <laughs> So that's so funny because one of the things anybody who knows us and knows our community, we don't sell. We share because we're not. That's not. We share. Not, we share like what we it. do, and and hopefully we weed out and only get the right people in, which is i.e. professional, you know, top level investors. That's our goal because um, we want to do deals with them. But our thing is we're doing deals. You know, as a commercial real estate broker, which is how all this mess started. A lot of years ago in the real early 90s, <clears throat> I had an older guy come to me. He was, uh, there's a lot of guys, that, it's a full commission job. So there's 10 people clamoring to just get real estate deals done in Detroit in one of the worst recessions there was. So it was a mess. And, and uh, there's one guy at the end who's oh, constantly selling uh, real estate. Yeah. And he wasn't, he never listed anything and he never, he was all apartment buildings. And I'm like, how? I wonder, and I walked that. I said, can I ask you a bunch of questions? He's like, absolutely. A lot older than me. I said, what's the deal here? Like, you never get a listing. Uh, you know, he's like, because I have a list of all the people who own the apartment buildings in in, uh, in the tri you know metro area. And I know who they're, they're going to buy these properties from mm-hmm. each other. They just don't know it's for sale. And he said, but here's the key. And this is the whole takeaway. I obviously re- remembered it for the rest of my life. He's like, these deals come to me all the time. It's landlords say, I need to sell this. Can you, can you, can you sell it for me? And he said, I don't do it very often. I only do it in the deals that I believe in. Right. You have to believe in what you're selling. Exactly. If it's not obvious that Jill and I believe in buying and selling land this way <laughs> after show number, whatever this is, uh-huh. uh, 1230, 1229. Yeah. And all the people in our group that are just raving positive about it with the results, you know, we're into this. Mm-hmm. I believe in this. I believe in rural vacant land. I believe in all kinds of land as a real estate vehicle to get filthy, stinking rich on the Pacific Ocean. And that's not only, and it's only going to get better. Yeah. And that's not the only benefit, making money. I dig it. I love land. And I love houses if they're priced right when you're actually getting away with something. When you're buying, it's cheaper than everybody else did because of data. So I love that whole component of it. I'm very passionate about it. And I've never wavered from that. Well said. If we're if I had to go send sell ballpoint pens right now, door to door, I'm not gonna I'm gonna fail at it the first minute because I don't believe in it. I don't believe the pen that I'm selling is better. I think door to door is stupid. You know, there's no pride in that. Thank you. Happy you could join us today. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can find us right here on the Land Academy Show. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we are on the House Academy Show. Tomorrow, the episode on the House Academy Show is called Not Killing Your Spouse While Building a Business Together. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. I'd like to take some um, credit for that topic. (laughs) (laughs) I think I just stole that show from you. As we're brainstorming the other day. So, yes, thank you. The Land Academy Show remains commercial free. For you, our loyal listener, so wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We, we are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration. 
to buy undervalued property.